Praise the Lord, everyone. Brother Roop here with Sister Gretchen. Good morning. And good morning from Soshi. So she say. Kosike. 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 Slovakia. Yeah, we've been here almost two weeks. We came to visit a church. Uh, we met the pastor earlier this year in the U.S., uh, Illinois specifically. And we came to visit and fellowship. And uh, so far, we've been having a wonderful time meeting with different members and hanging out with them. And it's been really great. Yeah, we're having lots of fun. And the church here is awesome. And uh, we're enjoying their company. Yes. All right, well, today's devotional is Sin and a Way Out. Ooh, a way out. That's what yes, we're talking about. Yes, that's what we all need, a way out from our sin. We do. Yeah. So Proverbs eighteen seventeen says, I love those who love me and those who seek to find me. Mm -hmm. Charles Spurgeon said, a sight of his crucifixion crucifies sin. Ooh, what's that again? Say that again. A sight of his crucifixion crucifies sin. Wow. I'll have to think about that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you see Jesus, pictures of Jesus on the cross, and he's, it's really unbear, it's really hard to look at. That's supposed to remind us of our sin and how ugly our sin is. Right. And how it separates us from God. And yes, a true heart for God is going to feel pain when they see Jesus on the cross. That's true. Because it really magnifies the wickedness of our sin. Yes. That he had to suffer so much to cleanse us of our sin. He did. He paid the price in full. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Though the bad news is devastating, that we are, in our sinful nature, contrary to God's character and out of line with His foundation of wisdom, mm -hmm. the good news is that we can change. We can. Wisdom does not remain forever elusive, no matter how firmly we have rejected it in the past. Even if folly has hounded us for years, we can still turn a single moment to the voice of wisdom calling from the streets. It is not too late to become unfit for a sinful world and fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Yes, that's the difference between living for the world or living for Jesus. Yes. The wisdom of God will lead us to the cross of Jesus, of course. That is where all of our former futility is redeemed and our rebellion forgiven. A humble bow before the sacrificial lamb would cleanse us of the muck of this world and put us on a path of discipleship. But once we have passed through that cross, we must cultivate our love for the eternal. We must pursue wisdom with a passion. We must become enamored with the righteous ways of the world as it was meant to be. When we do, we will find it. Yes, we have to view the eternal. Yes. That's an important statement. It's hard not to focus on the here and the now that right. we're living in, but that is the only way we're going to make it to heaven. Right. Is if we forsake this world and all of its sinful trappings and focus and live for the eternal. Because we are eternal beings, even though our life in the physical here on earth is temporal, we're, we're, we're going to live forever. It's a matter of where. That's right. You know how real estate says everything is valued in location, location, location? Mm. Well, guess what? Eternity is valued in location. Right. We all we love to talk about heaven, but uh, we nobody, nobody wants to talk about hell. In fact, when I make videos, and I get a lot of criticism. Nobody wants to talk about hell. But it, but you can't have heaven without hell. 
because it comes from the same book. That's right. And we're, <laughs> when we're born, we're born with a sinful nature. You don't have to teach a two-year-old to lie. No. You don't have to teach a two-year-old how to <laughs> throw a temper tantrum. Nope. You, so our default is hell. And it's only when we come to the cross of Jesus and repent do we start making the path for heaven. Yes. And it's not an overnight process. No. But the point is, is you have to choose to live for God so you can live eternity with God. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, it's progressive sanctification. It's, yes. it's growth over your entire life. Right. You so. know? And if you have a problem with going to church, if you have a problem reading your Bible, if you have a problem listening to worship music and listening to um, godly uh, sermons. You probably haven't repented. You know, you're not going to like heaven. Right. You know, you're not going to fit in. In fact, you're just not going to make it. Because that's what heaven's going to be like. It's going to be like a church service. Yeah. So, so. you know, and we all... You know, I know I'm going to speak for myself. I was in the pit of hell before Jesus saved my soul. Mm. And before he taught me to repent. And I just have a desire to never, to, ne to not go to hell. And to live in heaven for eternity. So, and that's a choice that you could make today too. That's right. So a little bit more to our devotional. We usually speak about these things after, but, but it seemed like the perfect place. It did. If you are ever lacking in perspective, read the first two and the last two chapters of the Bible. And this was great because when we read this, we did this. We opened up the Bible and read the first two chapters of Genesis and the last two chapters of Revelation. Yeah. Genesis 1 and 2 and Revelation 21 and 22 are pictures of perfection. Yes, perfection. From paradise to paradise, from the Garden of Eden to the city of God, from the dust of the earth to the bride of the Christ, bride of Christ, wisdom rules. Yes. In case you've never read Proverbs, Proverbs is about wisdom and folly. Right. It separates one from the other, and it gives you really great examples of what it is to live in wisdom and what it is to live in folly. And it's kind of in the middle of the Bible, so it's in the middle of the two chapters that are perfect up front, and the two chapters at the end that's perfect. Yeah. So, so it's kind of... <laughs> Take away the huge parentheses of the sin problem, Genesis 3 through Revelations 20. And you will clearly see the holiness of God and the beauty of his handiwork. And that is true. In Genesis 3, it starts off with the serpent. How the serpent beguiled Eve into being disobedient. That's when the train wreck happened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're still in it. You will clearly see the holiness of God and the beauty of his handiwork. It's yes. often hard. In this parenthesis interim, you see such beauty, but it's there. Right. It's our origin and our destiny, all rolled into one. As you read these four chapters, the eternal bookends on either side of the temporal sin problem let your love grow deep for your creator and redeemer. And that's what it is. Genesis is about God's creation. And uh, Revelations is about us being redeemed. Right. As a plant stretches toward the sunlight, let your life grow toward his wisdom. Open up before him and let yourself love his ways. Yes. And that's another thing. If, until you fall in love with the Word of God and you fall in love with Jesus and what He did for us, you're, you're, gonna, you're not going to make it to heaven. Right. Because you have to know the Word of God 
to be able to navigate this world. Yeah, and our focus should be on Revelation chapter 21 and 22. We should read that every day just so our view of where we're going isn't clouded. Yeah, we keep where we're going as, right. on a straight and narrow. And you know, Adam and Eve had perfection, absolute perfection, and they chose to dis be disobedient. Yes. And, you know, if they couldn't do it, what chance do we have without Jesus as our Savior? No chance. There's just no chance, right. you know. Well, we hope y'all have a blessed Sunday. We are getting ready to head out the door to go to church in Kosike, Slovakia. Kosike. 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 <laughs> We go through this every time. <laughs> I'll get it the last day we're here and we're leaving. That's not good. <laughs> so we hope y'all have a blessed day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.